Hey guys, welcome back to Ideal Fabricator. I'm Steven and today, finally I'm getting back on the 53. I've been bogged down with yard work. I've had uh, a couple of big windstorms blow through here and lost 28 trees and I've decided that I don't want to be a lumberjack. I'd rather be a fabricator. So today I'm taking a break from all that wood chopping and uh, we're gonna get the fender or the uh, gas tape door on the fender. So, um, first of all, before I talk to you about this door, I wanted to mention that for quite a while now, um, I was trying to decide what kind of door, and I was looking at different cars and parking lots and pull and save, and, and all the gas doors out there, they were just ginormous. They are like four inches, five inches in diameter. And um, I didn't think that a big door would look right on, on this fender. So um, I wanted something with a smaller opening and that's why I went with this door set up here. Now, this is made by a company called Hagen, I think Hagen Street Rods actually. And um, what I did was I went to their website and on their website they have a, a contour um, gauge that you can print. And they offer their, their doors in three profiles, flat, semi-curved, and then a more radical curve. Okay, so I went ahead and took this and transferred it to a piece of cardboard so that I could come over to my fender and see which one of these, like see this one works here, but I don't know if I wanted it there. But this slight curve, seemed to be better in this area here, which is kind of where I wanted it. So that way, by getting this and doing this first, I was able to figure out which door to order, okay? The other thing that I liked about Hagen was you can buy this with the door, the sheet metal, not attached to the box. There's other companies out there where this is all one piece and the problem with having the box on here is you can't like adjust for the angle, right? It's not going to be perfect. And you just want to, you know, you get it close, you buy it close, and then you know you're going to have to massage it to make it fit. So I like the fact that I could buy this without this stuck on there, which is pretty cool. And the way it works is you get this piece in the kit here. That would drop in and then you would weld this around the perimeter. And then this uses a, a gas cap that just has a... So you don't have to unscrew the cap to fill it with fuel. And then it has this little magnetic catch which pops the lid up for you. And then the other thing that they do, which is nice, is you'll notice here that one of these is welded and the other one isn't. And they do that so that you can shape it. Because if this one was welded to that, it would be really difficult to change the, the arc a little bit to make it fit your application. So I like the way they did that, that it was you know, well thought out for, for somebody that wants to put it in themselves and needs to be able to adjust it and kind of finesse it. So that's why I went with these guys here and uh, they have different openings too. You can get round and oval and teardrop and square and, you know, so whatever you think is going to work for you, they have it. I'm also going to, um, after this is, after I put the box on, I'm going to take this little piece of pipe that I have, a little piece of tubing. I'm going to find the low spot, which is probably going to be right here. And I'm going to weld this on there. So if water gets in or if I overfill it by accident, the, the, the fuel will have a place to go. It won't just sit inside this, you know, box. So I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to take the over, the, uh, what is it, rollover valve. And I'm going to weld a tab on, on this. It'll probably be something like that. And in that way, uh, 
I can vent the fuel tank and it's up high where it's supposed to be and, and you'll never see it. So I think that's going to work out really cool. So that's what I'm going to do. And I got to tell you, you know, for the longest time, I've been mounting panels and um, patch panels and all that kind of stuff, you know, doing butt welds. And, you know, I, I believe that a butt weld is the only way to go. I'm, I'm not a big fan of lap joints. I like to just butt them together, leave a little bit of a gap, 50 thousandths or so, and put it together. Well, I saw a video on YouTube, and uh, it's amazing what you can learn on YouTube, guys. <laughs> it's just amazing. So there's a guy on there. His web, his YouTube name is Fitz Fabrication. F I F I T Z Y or Z E Fabrication. And this guy showed me something that I never even thought of. So I'm going to show you today. I've tried it. I like it. It works, and um, it's super easy. So before, I would use these guys, okay? And before you could even buy these guys, I actually made my own out of some one inch square tubing. And uh, I just used a piece of round rod. And these worked okay, but you need a whole bunch of them to do a panel. And then it's hard to, it's hard to get the spacing and, and they work, but they take a lot of time and, you know, and jockeying around to get them to work right. So that's how I used to do it. And since I've used his technique, Fitz's check technique, I don't even use these anymore. And here's his technique, just real simple, but I'll show you, we'll go through it together and I'll show you how it works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this square out here. So this plate will go in and I can adjust it and get it exactly where I want it, all right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp this to the fender all the way around, okay, nice and tight, all right? And then when it's where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and tack this to the fender on all the corners and then in the middle and, you know, maybe like three tacks on each, on the perimeter, okay? Once I've done that, what you do is you take your grinder, and I'm just gonna use my little wizard tool, and I'm gonna use this edge as a guide, and I'm gonna go at an angle along this edge, and I'm gonna cut through the fender, okay? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start on the corner. I'm gonna make a cut here. I'm gonna make a cut here at a 45. And then once I do that, I'll be able to push this down so it's flush with the fender. I'll hold it in place and I'll tack it. And I'll just work my way around cutting the spot welds and making the cut at an angle. And I'll, I'll tell you how that angle works in just a second. Make the cut and just work my way around, cut the tacks, push it down, weld them flush, and just move my way around until I get it all the way around. And then what you know you guys know is we just fill in between, take our time, we don't want to warp the panel, and um, and it'll fit perfect. It'll fit perfect. Let me show you why the angle works so good. So Here's a sketch, okay? And uh, let me get my pin here so I can show you. So if this is a piece of sheet metal here and this one, and they're overlapped. If you just go along it, you end up with a gap, a bigger gap, okay? Because you, the gap ends up being the thickness of whatever your cutoff wheel is. If you go at an angle, okay, Notice how this part is farther away from this part, and this part is farther away from that part. And so when you pull the two panels together, you have a very small gap. And uh, that's pretty cool, all right? So I used to think that, in fact, in the past, I would cut it 
a little bit small and then grind it and sand it and try and get the piece to fit in perfectly and it just takes a long time. With this technique, you just cut a rough hole to make room for the hinge part, fit it in place, clamp it to it, tack it, and then the other cool thing is by having it tacked all the way around, we make the cut here, the relief, relief cut here, and then work our way around. The sheet metal doesn't get all wonky on you because the fender is supporting it. And um, it's going to be cool. I'm going to show you how we do it. And uh, I guess let's get busy and cut a hole. <laughs> Got a hole cut. It's not pretty, but it doesn't have to be because it's going to go away when we're done. <laughs> so now we can set our panel in here. And you can see that I got a little bit of massaging to do to get it just where I want it. Okay, so I chose this location. Uh, because I noticed that with this this curve here, which is that one, and I've actually increased it a little bit to make meet the fender better, but I noticed that it fits pretty good in here. And then because the fender it curves two ways, it curves this way and it curves this way. I found out by playing around with this that if I if I put it with this main curve this way, I wouldn't have to have a like a complex curve on the center of the cap. In other words, I wouldn't have to, I have this curve here, and if I put it a different way, I would have to have the cap kind of like be in a dome. And that's you know kind of tricky and hard to get it to look really nice. So by doing it this way, you notice that this is almost flat. So this is a flat edge here. And so by putting it in this way, you can get it so that there's not a whole lot of messing around. Okay? So it fits in there pretty good. So let's take this off here. Unscrew this one here. Try not to lose that tiny little screw. Okay, so now I just have the plate. And it gives you an idea better of what we're doing here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly shape this down. I can do it a little bit by hand without too much fuss. I think I'm going to take it over to the uh, to my dolly and do it on that. So So you're probably looking at this going, "Hey Steve, where'd you get that?" Well, this guy's is what uh, shoe, shoemakers used to use. It's an antique um, shoe shoe cobbler thing, I guess. It's got a nice curve to it, and uh, best part is it was free. So we're gonna.
Yeah, this is that trial and error part. <laughs> Let's see how, how far away we're at. And we're getting there. Let's work at it. Let's uh, sneak up on it a little more. See how it looks. So it doesn't move on me. Getting close. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fuss with this a little bit off camera, guys, so you don't have to watch me get this. But when I get it where I want it, we'll come back and. Uh, We'll keep working on it and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, I had to take the fender off because I couldn't get it, I realized that I couldn't get in here and weld this patch and cut it because of the bed was in the way. So, so I saved you guys the uh, tedium of removing the fender and uh, I got this clamped on here. Now this looks like, like a total cluster of clamps. Hey, that's a pretty cool clamp cluster. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to work my way around. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to tack this corner, and then I'm going to work my way around the top, and then I'll remove these clamps as I go and add additional clamps so that I get a nice tight fit on the uh, filler door top and the fender. So I want it you know, to fit really nice. And then once we get that done, tacked to the place, I can remove the clamps and then we can go ahead and start making our cuts on both sides and pulling this down, lining it up, getting it flush with the top of the fender and tacking it and then just working our way around until we get it all the way around tacked. And then that inner piece, that'll just fall out. And then we'll have a perfect butt weld all the way around. The panel will fit just perfect. And um, then it's just a matter of little tacks all over the place until we get it completely welded. So important thing, take your time and, um, and just work slowly and uh, it's gonna turn out good. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna start tacking this. Where's my welder? Oh, here he is. Okay, I got all the clamps off guys, and uh, and so it's tacked to here. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make the cut. I'm gonna start here at this corner and just work my way around the whole panel. And so we're gonna make a cut here and here so that I can push this top piece flush with the fender. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so here we go. 45 degree angle.
So I'm just using this body hammer here. It's got this uh, flat spot on it. Now you could use the hammer here to push the panel down level. But I kind of like pushing it down like that and get it so it's nice and smooth. And then you go ahead and put a tack on it. And see it's nice and level. So I'm just going to continue to go around this panel and uh, make some cuts, push it down with my hammer like I showed you, and I'm just going to keep going. All right, so I'm going to work on this for a little bit, and then when I come back, I'll show you how far I've gotten. <laughs> All right, guys, I worked my way around this panel, made the cuts, and uh, I just tack welded it as I went. Here's the uh, panel inside that came out. So, like that, and so now I just have one thickness, and uh, pretty nice. So, it's almost supper time. I think, uh, I think we'll finish this up tomorrow, so um, tomorrow morning we'll get after it. We'll fill in all these welds, grind it smooth, get it so it's pretty nice, and um, mount it back on the truck, so see how it fits. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, guys. <laughs> all right, guys, I got up early this morning, and uh, man, it's like four hours later. I got this uh, patch panel in, check it out. Looks pretty good, I think. And uh, it's over here in the door. Pops up like that, and man, it takes a long time, guys. I, I can't emphasize how much, how important it is to take your time, you know, and do lots of tacks, let it cool down, come back, lightly sand, lightly grind it, and then hammer and dolly it. A lot of hammer and dollying on this, because every time you weld it, uh, the metal shrinks where the weld is, so you gotta get the high spots, hammer it up. Anyway, it's very time consuming, but it's worth it in the end. And then you just, it's amazing how accurate your hands are. You know, just feeling the shape of the fender, you can find the low spots. And then I use this little ruler here when I'm trying to, and I just bend it at a little bit of an angle. I don't know if you come around here, you can show them, sweetheart. So I take it like this, and I, okay, and then I just move it along, and I can see the low spots, the high spots. Anyway, I, I use the ruler, I check for, you know, if it's flush at the seams, and then uh, just a ton of hammering out. It, it's, I mean, I, I suppose I could spend like a whole bunch of hours and make this thing like, so that you couldn't see any of these little, you know, imperfections and whatnot, but this is such a thin layer of, of body filler, it's just gonna be beautiful. So I wouldn't really worry about, you know, like getting it perfect, because I don't really think there is anything, such a thing as perfect. And then I had a bunch of uh, pinholes. So let me show you the technique for that. I just use my light and I go underneath. Of course, I don't have any pinholes now, but I go underneath and I turn the lights off in the shop and I just work the light around. And then you can see them. They just, they jump out at you. And so then I just go along and hit those, grind them down, smooth them out, and... Uh, and get them ready to go. Another tool that I use a lot is it's just a block of wood with two different bits of sandpaper on it. And I use this as a way of seeing. What I do is I, I lightly scuff it so it's all the same color of gray. And then I take this and go over it. And I anywhere there's a high spot, and the low spot, the high spots will be scratched and the low spots won't. And then 
I would just continue to hammer and dolly, hammer and dolly. And uh, just a quick, I'm not, this video really isn't about hammering and dollying, but let me just, um, don't be afraid. Cause like, if you stretch the metal, you can shrink it. And if you shrink it too much, you can stretch it back. It's amazing. I mean, the, the, you can just stretch it, shrink it, you know, don't, don't freak out, okay? So if you want to stretch the metal, hammer on dolly. If you want to shrink the metal, you know, hammer off dolly, okay? And I usually put my hand underneath and I use, the technique that I like to use is, I don't just like hit it, I, I use that kind of a, a stroking technique. And it takes time. You know, you don't want to just, you know, bang on it. You just work it slow and you'd be surprised. Just a few minutes and that low spot will come right back out. You take your block of wood, work on it, boom, it, it'll be nice and smooth. Another tool that I use a lot is this tool here, okay? And uh, I think they call it a, a spoon. And the way I use this tool is, like if I'm just hammering like this, I'm just hitting on the very crown of the hammer. You can see there the hammer is it's not flat. It has a crown on it. Okay, but if I want to spread the, the blows out a little bit, I'll put this on the panel and I'll hammer moving the spoon back and forth. And what it does is it, it's, it flattens the high spots and, and brings everything in alignment. It's, it's a really handy tool. This one's made by um, Martin. Let's see, what's the number? 1036. Super handy tool, guys. All right, and I don't have that many hammer and dolly tools, so I've got, you know, just a few different hammers and uh, the spoon here and some dollies. And um, this has got a flat side, it's got a curved side, and you got a curve here, and you got another curve here. So handy little tools. So if you guys want to tackle this kind of a project on your rig, just do it. You're going to be they are going to be real happy with it. So now what I got to do is, here's the box, okay? And uh, I had to do a little shaping here because this fits up underneath. Just like that, fits up underneath. And the fender's got a, a crown to it, so I had to match the crown on these guys here, okay? I'll tell you how I did that because it, it works really good. So here's the piece that I took out of the, uh, the hole when I cut it, right? And I just labeled it and how it lays on here. It goes this way. Okay, so it lays in there. So I kind of have a rough idea of this curve here. And then what I did is I took the box on how it's supposed to go. I laid it on there. And then here's the, and of course, you know, this is just getting you close. So then what I do is I, now originally this piece was straight across. So this thing was up above like this, okay? So what I did was I just picked an arbitrary, I, I found the place I wanted and I just scratched it. And then I just used my hand sander and just sanded it down to the line. And that got me really close to this fitting in there. Oops. And uh, so, hey, that's just a little trick um, to maybe help you guys out to find the, uh, the curvature of something. So now I'm going to mount this in here. I'm going to weld it around. And then I've got this little piece of pipe. I'm going to drill a hole in that and this is going to be so when this is up on the fender this is the low side here over here so so if a, any water that gets in or spilled fuel or whatever 
This is just gonna, I'm gonna drill a hole and weld this in the bottom of the box here. And that's gonna allow the water and stuff to drain out so it doesn't just sit in here. So, so I'm gonna weld those in and um, then I'm gonna paint the inside of this with some chassis black paint. And I'm gonna put some weld through primer on these edges here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and weld this into the bottom. Let me show you. Okay, so this guy's gonna go. Like that. And I'm just gonna weld it in all four corners and one in the middle and that'll be good. And then, um, and then I'll paint this with some epoxy primer. And I'll do the same thing with, I'll put some body filler in here and get this is, you know, the way I want it, where it's nice and smooth. And then I'll put some epoxy primer on it. And then uh, that part will be done. I won't have to worry about it until I get ready to paint the truck. So, and then from there, I'm gonna run the hose from the box down to the fuel tank and I'll be able to say the fuel system's done. So that's gonna be fun. I'll show you that when I get it finished. I'm not gonna bore you guys with all this welding. You've seen me weld before. Um, so that's the plan. That's gonna be there. That's gonna be poking out of there. And um, I'll tack that in place and uh, I'll be able to wrap up this project. And next on my list is my exhaust system. So I hope you uh, stick around for that. It's gonna be fun. And um, that's all I got for today, guys. So be safe in the shop if it's sketchy. And you'll know it because it just won't feel, your spidey sense will be tingling. So if it feels sketchy, don't do it. Be safe. I'll see you next time, Idaho Fabricator. <laughs> Thank you.